Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Have you ever wondered what games you should sell or you should use? Find out here at Purdue's. Find out on our top 10 list what games you cannot miss. Don't forget to subscribe to Purdue's. Bermuda Crisis, the Discovery Dawning, second edition here. Uh, as a kid, I heard a lot about the Bermuda Triangle, and I was very interested in it. I think in the late 80s, it was kind of a big deal. So now we get a game based on what's going on in Bermuda, and apparently there's a crisis going on. Uh, this game is kind of interesting to me. You have this scoring track that you're going around, and based on what happens in the game, it can speed up or slow down. So the players are going to have some control over that. And you're going to have a kind of a uh, simpleized tech tree that's going on. Uh, you can build things and activate these powers, and there's an advance where they're kind of out of order, where there's a little bit more straight up and down. Um, this is going to be a card manipulation where you're getting resources and trading them in for better cards um you're gonna be upgrading yourself as the game goes along when the game first started i was kind of like is this it is this it and then boom the game kind of kicked in and we had a blast with it once i kind of saw where it was going and i was excited to go back to the game that's normally a, a good game to me or a sign of a good game is there is when I'm done, I'm like, yes, I, I need to try that one again. And I had that with this game. And I felt very confident going forward with it when I was playing it. Now, there are some take that cards in it. I say take that, but it's more you're purposely getting these cards to try to stop your opponent. Uh, and you have cards that help you, and you have long-term strategy, and you have choices of which route you're going to go down. So it's not necessarily a random draw. I got some take that cards and I'm going to slap you down. I have to purposely go after them because I think you're ahead of me and it'll, it will be best for my time to do so. Um, the catalyst cards are fun. How you're trying to get these end game, more end game point type stuff. Um, and you can keep doing those. Sometimes you can get stuck with something you just can't do and you better change your strategy or punt it one or the other. The game plays quickly. At first I thought the game was going to last a while, but it ramped it up pretty fast and ended up being a very good time period uh, playing. I've played this two player and four player and I had a good experience both time. Um, it was interesting. You don't get to see all the cards the entire time, so it was a new experience every time I played. The Bermuda Crisis Discovery Dawning is a game that I'm going to keep. I'm going to keep it around. There was a lot of play with the cards. I like how sometimes they'd be up with fewer victory points and a, and a help, and then the opponent or you can flip them to give you more of these points, but it may be a detriment to you. That was a pretty neat little decision. There's some interesting things in this game. I think as a two-player experience, which is how I'm probably going to use this game most of the time is because of the way I game, um, I think it really hits the mark with that. I was super excited about that. This is a game I hadn't heard a lot about. Um, it kind of came out of nowhere for me, and I like those pleasant surprises. I'm glad I still have those. So the Bermuda Crisis is going to give you a very good two-player experience. You can play more. Um, I like the decisions. I like the ramp up. I like having to get the resources to build what I need, and I felt like it always had a way to get what I need. It might take me a little bit or I might have to divert a strategy, but it was available to me as opposed to just some games are just drawing cards and hoping you get what you get. Um, I was surprised with this one. I was very happy to say this will be a keep for me. I'm going to show you the components for the Bermuda Crisis Discovery Dawning 2nd Edition, but this will not be what you get. So I'm not going to comment on the quality. That I believe this is a, if I'm not mistaken, a prototype or a game crafter version. It's not indicative of what you'll get, 
but I also think it's important just to look at them. Uh, one of the things I do like, and I'll just comment, is this box, how it kind of goes half up and fits together. I like that. Um, the artwork on the front is, I guess, of the Bermuda Triangle. You're going to get a number of cards, which will be, I guess, for lack of a better term, upgrade cards. You'll get catalyst cards. So I'm just going to put them right side up. Get a number of these. And I like that the backgrounds are very different and easy to see. You get some adventure. And what's cool, it tells you right on the card, any three resources. So you know exactly what you need. You will get boost cards. Any three rares. I like that it's right on there. Sorry, we just got done playing. It looks like we mixed some of these up. So you get a number of these boost cards, and these will be the um, helpful cards, and they're worth two nature points if you don't use them. And you'll get a stack of ambush cards. These will be the more take that kind, any three commons and two nature points, and I like that. And they each, you know, this is prototypes that so go with it. You know, what they do on this side with a little bit of artwork. The catalyst cards, will be the victory point cards. So what you're trying to accomplish, and if you have less than seven victory points, you can do the top one. If you have more than eight, you do this one. And I'm not teaching the game yet. I'm just showing you the use of the cards. And these venture cards are kind of neat how they have a positive that are worth one nature point, but you flip them over through gameplay. There were two nature points, but they give you a negative. So those, those are kind of fun. And then you're gonna have these smaller cards, at least in this version that I have, they're smaller. Um, a set of rare cards and a set of common cards. And really they're just different, the ability to get different resources. Um, both will have a scroll in it and both will have artifacts in there. So here's a, an artifact card, exactly what they do on it, which is fantastic. The rest of them are just resources that you can get. Once again, do not take this as being the gospel, what it'll look like. And then you have resources here. Uh, and then you have the artifacts there. And there should be a scroll piece in here somewhere. Oh, well, it's in there. Uh, right now, they're going with these tiddlywinks. This is probably the worst component in the game. But like I said, it's not indicative of what the final one will be like, so I'm sure the Kickstarter will have all kinds of awesome things. Uh, you're going to get a rule book. It's full color. Uh, list of components in the front, which I like. A picture of it set up, which I like. This is pretty good. And a quick reference on the back, which is nice. This is the timer. I like that it's an hourglass. That's really cool. So the timer will go up through here and around and around and around and around, just like the sand would. I thought that was really cool. So you'll start here, then you'll come up. As long as there's stones down here, you'll keep going around, i.e. the game is going to progress, and that's really neat. And then you're going to get a double-sided map. So this is the basic skills. And your, let me show you. These are a little bit tiny, but these are resources you give up and the power you'll get. And you got to build the basics to go up. So basically, before this advanced, before this ultimate. The other side is advanced. The only difference is, is once you build the basics, you can build kind of however you want with your strategy. Um, and then you have different powers here, A, B, C. Um, but that's double-sided. Really nice. I like that it's double-sided. So one player wants to be basic, and the other player can be advanced. You know, obviously, two different cards. And you can totally play together. But I like I didn't have to have too much stuff. So I can just flip it over if I want. That's really nice. And those are the components. I like the layout. The graphic art is, is really good. The way things are laid out is really nice. That's more what I want to comment on than the quality. Because this is not indicative of what you'll get. As for the rule book, I didn't have any problems with it. It's a little lengthy. Uh, I like the quick resource on the back. Uh, there is a storyline to this game, and they do have, uh, if you want to more, know more of the lore, you can go to their website. That, that was nice. Um, it explains a little bit more the theme. Theme was hit or miss with me, but I think if I take the time to 
see what's going on. I feel like I'm trusting them a little bit that they know where the theme is going and how it attaches. Um, but when I'm playing the game itself, it makes a lot of sense to me and the theme flows, if that makes sense. It's not necessarily a theme that I'm crazy about, but what I'm doing makes sense in that. So let me move past that. Um, I do like anytime you have a component list in the front with pictures. There are means if you're behind in the game, you can get the scrolls and you can definitely win the game kind of out of left field, which works in this game because it's short enough and it gives you a good satisfying experience. If you're going to get all of those, you're still going to have to work for it a little bit. There's some trading in this game um, and I think you have to kind of negotiate hard to get somebody to give you that scroll. The chance of you getting all three is probably very small. I'm not going to do the math on it, but trading for the first couple, you can't trade for the third one, and I think that's going to be tricky. And then after you get the other two, then it may be more of a luck of a draw, but you can also focus on getting those cards uh, more than the other players and giving yourself a higher chance of getting those. So not total luck, because the scrolls are in three different decks, not the same deck, so it's not just a random draw. Um, the game does really good. There's some unique... I think innovative mechanism in the game, like the turning of the cards for victory points uh, and detriments and benefits. And the the game, the rule book did a really good job getting that across. I, I think the catalyst cards could have been a mess in a different rule book, but explained very well here. And I enjoyed that. The rest of the stuff is um, we got pictures in here, we got explanations. So for an independent game, I think they did a very good job on this rule book. Probably could have used less words. But they were very thorough, and, and I I appreciated that when I was playing, because I really didn't have any questions, and I was surprised by that. I thought I was going to have a lot more questions when I was playing, but it flowed so well. So many things that you need are on these uh, these player boards, so it flowed very nicely for me. So good job. So let me show you how the game is set up. I will zoom in right here. So you're going to have a hour clock that will be timing down. So you're going to put a number of these Tillywinks here on stability stones, one for each player, and this will kind of represent how many rounds of the game you're going to play. And this start thing will move every time an artifact card is drawn, it will move around. When it gets to 11, it will continue back down to 5 as long as there's a stone. You take the stone off and it will come back around and then you take the last stone off, and if there's no stone, you continue on. Now, there are things that will happen. Like here, you draw your first Catalyst card. These are victory point cards, okay? So these are things that you will try to accomplish in order to score a victory point, i.e. get a chip. If you have less than seven chips, have at least two positive Venture Mystiques. If you have eight or more chips, have at least two negative Venture Mystiques. And when you accomplish one of these cards, one of these Catalyst cards, you will then draw another one. So you will always have one at this point. And there's a power on the board that will give you two. And like this one, everyone draws an ambush, everyone draws a boost, everybody loses a victory point or what's called a stability stone, and you continue on. Here, uh, everyone draws one mystique card, destroys all artifacts in play, etc. So the game can end one of three ways. There's Within the, the card stock, there is a piece of the map in here, or a scroll in the commons. There's a piece of the scroll in rare and then I believe there's a piece of the scroll in the venture if you get all three of those automatically win you cannot win or you cannot get that last scroll by trade okay so there's a little bit of luck in that and that's just a luck factor it is what it is the second way is you get 14 victory points you get victory points by doing the catalyst cards you get victory points by doing these and basically you need to get the resources turn it in and you'll put a victory point and stability stone on there. When you get up here, you'll be putting two down and two down here. So a combination of building these and these catalyst cards will work you towards the 14 victory points required to win. If the game wins by the timer, victory points no longer matter. You win by nature points. And nature points are found on unused cards like this. If it's uh, Some of these will stay in front of you. If they stay in front of you, if it happens to be a card, you'll get one victory point. So this one stays in front of you as long as you have it. That will get you nature points. 
And these venture cards will get you nature point. And for the most part, they're worth one for a positive. If they ever get flipped over, it's two victory points, but you get a negative. And there's a plus seven, a minus seven in here. So that can be a big way. And that's where you get nature points. So it's so fascinating to have multiple ways to win, but do you go after nature points or victory points? If you're trying to get that quick win, you're going to get the victory point route. But all of a sudden, you might have to slam your brakes on because the timer's going to run out. And you know that, so you have to get those uh, nature points. I find that very, very interesting. Okay, so the way the game is going to play, there's a, there's a number of things that you can do on a turn. And I'm just going to show you here on the reference sheet. On your turn, you can build and upgrade any number of uh, camps. That's going to be building this. That would be your entire turn, this one action. So you build one of these, you put down your chips, you give up the cards required to build it, and that's an action. Another thing you can do is you can buy one of these cards, either the Venture, the Boost, or the Ambush. You can't see them. So the Ambush, the Boost, or the Venture. To get an Ambush card, you have to give up three common cards. To get the Boost, you have to give up three rares. To get the Venture, you have any combination of rare or common, but it has to be three. So three, 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 three commons, three rares, and three resource. And that would be your turn to buy one of those. And these will go face down in your area. You can read it and see what it does, but you get two nature points. If you use it, then you lose those two nature points, but you get the power. Sometimes, like I said, you'll get half the adventure points, one, and you get to keep it in front of you. Uh, you can activate any amount of your power. So if you start building this up, you will have these powers that will come play. Let me just show you a couple. Mystiques cost you one resource less to buy. Draw and always hold an additional catalyst card. You're immune to in, uh, ambush attacks. Once per turn, you may discard up to three resources, draw an equal amount. You may buy a number of mystiques of only one per turn. You may complete the top or bottom catalyst regardless of the victory points you have. So you can activate as many of those as you want, and that's a turn. Uh, you play any number of ambush or boost, and this is important, you can play as many ambush or boost cards as you want a turn. So you can't play both, but you could use, if you have six or seven of these sa saved up, you could use it all in one turn. So it's as many as you want. You can use any number of your artifact cards. Artifact cards are going to be in the common and rare deck. And what I love about the graphic design of this game, no joke, is tells you right how we can do. It. I can draw any one of those mystique cards. Mystiques are these three cards right here. I can draw one of my choice. Exclude it excludes the catalyst. I can disable enable a camp. So I can put this on somebody else's camp and their space cannot be used unless they or me or someone use another artifact card to enable it. This can become a wild. So if I need to build something on here and I lack a card, I could use an artifact card. I did that multiple times. I can destroy an ambush or boost card in play. So as these cards come into play, I can use this to stop it. Or I can rotate any venture. Remember, these have a positive side that they'll come down on, and you can rotate them by giving up an artifact card to perform the negative side. You're giving them more nature points if you think that you know, if it's early in the game, you're not sure the time is going to run out or not, but you can certainly hurt them for a very long period of time. And those are your actions. You can also trade with anybody. So think Settlers of Catan, trying to get different resources. You can pretty much trade anything but uh, the last scroll that you would need and victory points. And at the end of your turn, you would choose between the rare and the common, and you would draw four cards. But you have to say it in advance, like three rares and one common, or four commons, or whatever combination. You can't look at the card and then choose. Um, and that's the game. And you're, this game starts off kind of slow, and I was a little disappointed at first, but I really, really liked where it ended up going. And I was really, really kind of happy with that. Uh, there's not a whole lot of stuff to this game. It plays rather quickly, which I enjoy quite a bit. And you got quite a punch as the game. So the game progressively gets more interesting as it goes on. Who should play this game? 
This game works two-player, and that's so rare to find a pretty good game like this that works two-player, and I like it for that. You can definitely play with four. I'm focusing on the two because I think that's how I'm going to use it. Uh, it may not be the best for the game, but I did like the two-player experience. I think it's it, it, it scaled very well for me, and I was very happy with it. Um, I do like the Catalyst cards and getting those uh, tokens out, the, the blue chips, which would make it harder or easier, kind of change what I'm doing a little bit. Um, running through the resources was fun. I liked that, and I liked how... I was doing a lot more than I thought I was at the beginning of the game, which will make me appreciate the second game better in the third and the fourth and made me think about those decisions a little bit more because I realized I really was doing something very important. So that's really good for me and brought me back. Uh, you have the commons versus the rares, and you have these kind of resource cards that are being churned through, and they do different things. And You'll need the rares as you progress more, and the commons help you with the basic on the tech tree. That was really nice. Um, I also like that the take that cards were not part, like there wasn't just one deck you're drawing from. If I needed to take that card, I would go after it and get one to try to stumble my opponent rather than, oh, I got this, take that, there, I got to play it. It was a little bit more strategic for me because I had to go out and actually say, okay, I need one of these and I'm going to get, oh, okay, and I'm going to do that. That was really neat. Um, and that was a game saver to me. I think if the take that had been in there, because anybody who watches my videos or read my reviews knows I'm not a big fan of take that. The ability to get it when I need it was fun because it, it was a way to me to hinder them. And the same thing for me rather than, oh, I got this. It's just bam, 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 bam. And I'm hitting everybody all the time. So very good. Very good adding that in. Um, overall, I really like this game. Who should buy this game? Uh, Two-player experience would be really good. If you're looking for a little light game, um, well, short game, time period. It's not a very long game. Uh, maybe 30 to 45 minutes is what it took me to get through a game. But again, it gives you interesting decisions without being overly heavy. This isn't going to be the Gallerist or Kanban or something. So, um, gamers probably can be played with non gamers too, to some extent. They're willing to, to bite off a little bit. Not so much the party game crowd, but a, you know, a little bit beyond that. Otherwise, I was pleasantly surprised. I'm going to tell you to go ahead and either get this game or check this game out. I was pretty happy with the experience. And my wife and I both decided to keep this game, which happens but i think that one of us liking game more than the other is is more common um but then we have our favorites that we like together and this one kind of stayed in the in the keeper we're primarily going to use this two player just because that's going to fit our needs so this is going to be a keeper bermuda cross crisis discovery donning second edition keeper